everyone so with the summer coming up now it's time to do a little maintenance on my toro titan hd it's due for an oil change now this information will pertain to various titans and time cutters equipped with toro's 708 cc v-twin engine so before i get started with the oil change itself toro outlines in a lot of detail in their owner's manual the service intervals for the mower and they have a subsection for the engine about what maintenance needs to be done and in detail how to do it now if you don't have your owner's manual you can reach out to toro either online download it or call their customer service which is excellent so tor recommends they the oil and oil filter be changed yearly or every 100 hours the spark plugs should be pulled and regapped every 100 and replaced every 200 hours if you have a toro's standard air cleaner like this has the foam element on the top needs to be cleaned every 25 hours. I just use my air nozzle to do it. I think it does an excellent job. Or you can use soap and water. And then the paper element underneath needs to be replaced every 200 hours, which can vary depending on how dusty the conditions are. And then finally, the fuel filter needs to be changed every 500 hours. Now, definitely check your owner's manual. Some of this information can vary a little bit, but that's a pretty good general overview. Now, if you're using this residentially and you're not putting a lot of hours on it, Toro keeps things really simple rather than having to remember each item at a different interval. They do make a maintenance kit that has all of those aspects in it as well as a fuel system treatment so you can replace everything at one shot and you'll be good for a long period of time. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. The transmission fluid needs to be changed also. They recommend initially at so the 75 hour mark and then after that either 500 or 250 hours depending on what fluid you use. All these mowers also have various grease fittings. Every mower is a little bit different, but that needs to be done quite often, usually every 25 hours. So residentially, probably at least once a year, you're gonna have to uh, address the grease fittings, as well as I keep a second set of blades so I can sharpen them at my leisure. So let's go ahead and get started with the oil change itself. With these engines, you wanna make sure you're using not only a full synthetic oil, but you wanna be using a small engine oil. I'll be using Amsoil small engine oil. Toro also makes a small engine oil. Now what makes this different from a regular car oil is, this is an older standard, which is actually better for these air-cooled engines. They have much higher levels of zinc and phosphorus in it, so they're much better anti-wear additives. You can use car oil, but you're much better going off with a small engine oil like this. This will definitely help extend the life of your mower. And then the filter itself for these engines, the part number number is 1367848, real common filter for these V-twin engines. And Toro has made this process extremely simple. You really don't need a lot of tools. You're probably just going to need a rag. You'll need a strap wrench or some sort of large set of pliers for getting the filter off itself and then just some sort of oil jug to put the old oil in. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so before we get started, just make sure you warm up the engine. It's going to drain much faster if the oil is hot. And it's also going to churn up any contaminants that are sitting in the bottom of the sump. Also make sure you crack the oil fill before you get started so it drains a little nicer. These 708cc engines have this little blue zigzag piece here that keeps the oil drain hose from coming off by accident. If it's been sitting for a while, you might have to just kind of twist the hose and work it off. Sometimes it's a little bit tougher than others. And as you can see, it just comes off really easily. So this is sort of a uh, no tools drain hose for this. Um, usually I will put it behind the rear bash guard and just put it directly into my oil drain pan. Just put your finger over it before you get it lined up just to help avoid a mess. And now I have it directly in my oil drain pan. So spilled a couple drops, no big deal overall. Uh, pretty clean so far. So I'm just gonna let it sit and drain for a few minutes. Uh, this takes two and a half quarts of oil. So it's gonna take a few minutes to drain even though the engine is warm right now. So we'll go ahead and get the oil filter off. All right, so while the oil's still draining, I'll go ahead and get the filter off. This is where you need that strap wrench or set of pliers or something. Uh, it sits on its side, so inevitably some oil is going to spill out when you take it off. Place a rag underneath it. I have an absorbing pad. I've also used aluminum foil in the past just to make something to catch any oil that spills off. But oh, that came off pretty easily. I didn't need a ton of torque. You also want to make sure that the old gasket comes with it as well. Oh, we're already losing a little bit of oil, so I try to get this thing off as fast as possible so I don't lose any more. All right. Oh, yeah, so a decent amount of it drained out, but it looks like it caught everything. And the old gasket came off, so that's good. So just let this drip out. I'll clean that up in a minute, and then we'll go ahead and start getting the new oil and filter in. 
All right, so now with the oil cleaned up, the mating surface is nice and clean. I went and took the new oil filter, filled it up about halfway. Obviously, being side mounted, you can't fill it all the way. The old gasket came off, and the new gasket, I put a nice, clean, fresh ring of oil on it. So it just spins on the way any other oil filter does when you're doing a car. When the, the filter makes contact with the housing, three quarters to one full turn. And that's all it needs. So you don't have to go crazy with this. If you go too, too tight, you can end up deforming the gasket. So that's about three quarters to one full turn. So now that's on. Oil still draining a little bit, but I think, let's see. It looks like it's about done. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. Just a reverse procedure for putting it back on, real simple. You have to zigzag it through this blue piece first. So it fits nicely. This collar will go on the top of here. This is just so it accidentally does not pull out. And you push this back up, make everything nice and straight. And now we're seated. So now the oil change is nearly done. All I have to do is just put the new oil back in, run it, and then check the level. All right, everything's buttoned back up. Time to refill it. I put exactly two and a half quarts in here. I used a little bit to pre-fill the oil filter. And we're just going to go ahead and fill up the rest of the way. I've done this a couple times. I know it takes two and a half quarts. If you're doing yours and you're not 100% sure about it, you're doing it for the first time, as with anything else, put a little bit less in than what you're going to need. Run the engine and check it. Since the oil filter is not filled up all the way, we need to accommodate for that once we run it. I'll go ahead and finish filling this the rest of the way, and then I'm going to run the engine and double check the oil. All right, now that I got everything buttoned up, I'm just going to go ahead and run the engine for about 20 to 30 seconds. I just want to fill up the oil filter all the way so I get an accurate reading on the dipstick. And while the engine's running, I just want to check for any leaks, especially from the oil filter itself. Just go ahead and fire this thing up. so that should be sufficient so now I'll just let the engine sit for about five minutes so the oil can run all the way back down to the bottom of the sump all right now that the mower sat for a little while the final step is obviously going to be to check the oil so get a nice clean rag wipe off the dipstick one important thing to note when you check the oil on these you have to put the dipstick all the way in I usually just lock it down so you know it's all the way in some small engines especially ones with threaded dipsticks they don't have to go in all the way so all right, we are full, right at the full mark. Anywhere between here and here is considered full. I like to have it all the way up just so I have the max amount of oil in it so it runs the coolest. As you can see, pretty straightforward, simple oil change. Everything is easily accessible and like working on a car. Made a little bit of a mess taking the oil filter off, but that's a pretty straightforward and simple cleanup. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.